Hello everyone, we are back again and we are now ready for the third video in our series of making a magical beast sculpture. This is artwork we can do at home if we're stuck at home because of the coronavirus or if we're sick at home or just we're hanging out at home. We, we want to make a little bit of art. Um, if you haven't watched the first two videos in this series, the introduction video and the making an armature video, I really suggest that you do that now to, to have something ready to paper mache. But I'm assuming that you've gone ahead and you have created your armature. I've got mine here. I've got two armatures of my magical beast that I'm going to be using. One is this swan right here. Oops. And then the other is another swan. Perhaps they're relatives. They can go and they can visit and, you know, hang out together somehow. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I'm curious to find out. I've got two armatures. Now, before we go on with the next portion of the project, I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. First of all, take a look at your armature. Just pick it up for a second and give it a good look. Is your armature reasonably sturdy? There shouldn't be any flimsy little bits that are about to fall off. When I look at the armature I have here of my swan, it's, you know, it's, it's made out of foil and tape, so it's not rock solid. But on the other hand, if I give it a little shake, nothing comes off of it. It's pretty stable. It's pretty strong. That is super important. I want to make sure that when I put my tape on my swan, that the tape is nice and firm. No little bits of pieces of tape are sticking up. Nothing is wiggling. Everything feels nice and solid. That's going to be super important for when I go ahead and I do the next component of my sculpture. Alrighty, if your sculpture is nice and stable, if you are happy with its gesture and its motion, if you're ooh, if you're happy with how the shapes look, then you're ready to paper mache. You should have covered your sculpture with an awful lot of masking tape. There shouldn't really be a whole lot of aluminum foil showing through, as you can see in this piece. Alrighty, now it's time to do the paper mache. Now, folks, this is messy. I'm going to warn you. I went and I changed into an older sweater. You can see it's got like a little hole. Oops, this side. It's got a little hole in it. And I went and I put on an apron. And my work area is covered with some paper or newspaper so that I don't make a big fat mess and I can, you know, not get too frustrated. For the paper mache portion, I'm going to need a couple of materials. I'm going to need some water, and I put mine in a measuring cup. I'm going to need some Elmer's glue right here. This is plain old white Elmer's glue. If I don't have that, I can use something like this, a wood glue. But it's really important. I don't want to do something like, you know, a Gorilla Glue or a Super Glue. I need to stick with a simple water-based glue like Elmer's. You can also go online and look up various paper mache solution resources that have got special instructions on the package. But we want to keep this simple, materials you have at home. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I want to pour out a small quantity of water. This is just over a quarter of a cup of water. You can use just maybe an inch of water in your cup or in your dish that you have, whatever you want to mix it in. In the earlier video, I showed you that I got a bowl. You might just want to mix your paper mache in a bowl. But to demonstrate, I'm going to use this clear see-through cup. Then you're going to want to get your glue. I'm getting my Elmer's glue, and I need to take a minute and wrench the glue open. Didn't know that would be such an aggravation. Hold on one second. Let's get the glue open here. There we go. Got it open. You might need a grown-up to help you if your glue is sticking. I've gone ahead, and I've just taken the lid off of the glue. And now I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to pour glue into my water solution so that I have about a half amount. Ooh, there's a big bubble. That looks funny. Half amount of glue, half amount of water. Okay, that looks about right. Let's go ahead and stop. Ugh. This is not an exact science, folks. You do not have to be uber precise with your measurements. You just want to shoot for half and half. Now that I've got it in my container, I'm going to stir it up. I'm using a plastic teaspoon, but you could use a popsicle stick. You could use um, your fingers. You could use a spoon. This will wash off a utensil. It's really pretty easy. I'm just going to stir it up and let me look at it here. Give it a little bit more of a stir. You want to stir it really thoroughly so that the glue and the water are very evenly mixed. Oh, perfect. This looks great. So when I'm done, it's going to drip off my spoon. It's going to kind of look like 
whole milk maybe, or perhaps if you've ever seen whipping cream that's sold before you mix it, or maybe half and half that your mom and dad put in their morning coffee, that's the texture that you want. It should be evenly mixed. If it's runnier than that or thinner than that, add a little more glue, okay? If it's really thick and chunky and it doesn't drip off your spoon at all, add a little more water. But now you're ready. Now, I'm gonna paper mache my animal with two coats of paper. The first coat that I'm gonna use is plain old newspaper that I've torn into strips. It looks like this. And when I do this, when I apply my paper mache, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna lightly dip it just a little bit and then I'm going to use my fingers to really work the paper mache solution all through and through my newspaper. Now look carefully, kids. This is not too drippy, but it's also not dry. It's evenly saturated. Then I'm going to take my sculpture and I'm going to lay my paper mache on top of it and give it a little squeeze. Now, this can sometimes be aggravating because sometimes the paper mache has a tendency to want to pop up off the sculpture. So you really have to press firmly. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do another piece. And instead of putting it someplace else in another whole section of the sculpture, no, I'm going to stick with where I am and I'm going to overlap and weave it right on to that first piece. If I have an extra piece here, I just fold it around and I squeeze it pretty hard. And it's gonna fight you a little bit. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna sometimes wanna flop off and you might get a little annoyed. But folks, they call it art work for a reason. It's gonna take a little work and concentration and your strong character trait of patience and perseverance to get it done. So I'm gonna go ahead and now paper mache my entire sculpture with one coat of the newspaper, dipping, making sure that I clean off the excess, and then going ahead and laying it on my sculpture. Now, you're going to cover the entire sculpture, the wings, the top, the back, the head, even the bottom, and then you're going to do a second coat. Now, to make the second coat easier to tell where you paper mache and where you didn't, for your second coat, you're going to use a different type of paper. It might be a piece of plain old white copy paper from the printer. You've taken a couple of sheets and you've torn them into strips. It might be something like a brown paper lunch bag that you've torn into strips. Or it could be a second coat of the newspaper you are using. I find it's actually easier if I go ahead and I use a different color paper because it's easier for me to see when I am working, what I've covered and what I haven't. You also might want to go ahead and um, remember that if you use the white paper, it may be a little easier to decorate your sculpture when you're done. So you're going to go ahead and paper mache, paper mache over everything. It's important to remember that you don't want pieces that are too big. Notice how my pieces are long and skinny. They go on better because I can wrap them through and around the sculpture. Um, to tear my pieces, I can just take a piece of newspaper that looks like this, and I can rip it like that, and then rip it down like this, and then again in half if I need to. I don't want to take super big pieces like this for a sculpture that's this little, because if I do, they're probably going to be too large, and I'm going to end up having trouble with my sculpture in terms of covering it evenly. I want to think of weaving my longer, skinnier strips. On the other hand, I also don't want a piece that's too small like that. It'll take me forever. So longish strips, you might have to cut them in half or tear them in half, and you need to use your good artist brain and evaluate as you go. Are my paper mache strips too big? The most important thing is to make sure that you press them on firmly while you're working so that they stay in place. Now, I'm going to leave you to go ahead and get your paper mache solution ready. And just to help you remember, it is one part water or a half water, a half glue, which you thoroughly mix together. That's what it is. Um, I'm going to leave you now to paper mache. I'll make another video where I tell a story about a magical beast. And if you're in the mood to listen to it, you can listen to it and it'll help pass the time while your fingers are very busy paper mache. So get to work and have fun. Bye-bye.